This video is about Do You Boast in the Bible? Hi, I'm Bake Adafi, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, chapter 2, we'll begin in just a moment. Well, do you boast in the Bible? Verse 16 talks about judgment. The, when the, in the day of God, when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. In that day, there's going to be judgment. There will be a judgment of our works. Verse 13 through verse 15 of chapter 2 is kind of a parenthesis. Uh, and verse 12 and verse um, 16 pick up the idea, 16 picks up the idea that's, that's, that, that verse 12 ends with. So verse 12 says, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. And now verse 16 says, that was 12. This 16 says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. In other words, if you sin and you have the benefit of the law, if you're Jewish, you're going to perish. If you sin with, without the law, if you're a Gentile, you're also going to be judged and you will perish. And God judges the secrets of men. Nothing can be hidden from him. Ecclesiastes 12, 14, the end of, the, end of that book of Ecclesiastes says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it is good, whether it be, is good or whether it is evil. It's all written down in God's book. Revelation 20, 12 is a picture of that judgment. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. So our works are going to be judged. It matters how we live. We, if you say you have faith in Christ, you have to have a life that backs it up. You have to have works that flow out of your faith in Christ. If you've had many spiritual benefits, or if you've had none, 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Then shall every man have praise of God. Well, we hope there's going to be praise from God, or maybe there won't be praise from God because of the way that you lived. Everything is going to be brought to light. There's going to be no deflection of the way that you lived. You're not going to be able to say, well, so-and-so made me do that, or God, this is your fault. You aren't going to be able to deflect it. There's going to be no artful concealment of our sins. Everything is going to be naked and open unto him with whom we have to do. And Jesus Christ himself is going to be the judge. John 5.22 says, For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. The Lord Jesus will be our judge. Acts 10.42 says, And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he, that it is the Lord Jesus, who, is, who, is, who was ordained by God to be the judge of the quick or the living and the dead. He will judge the living, he will judge the dead. It's the Lord Jesus' job to do this judgment. And we have assurance that this judgment is going to take place. Acts 17.31 says, Because he has appointed a day, God has, in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, that's the Lord Jesus, whom he has ordained, where he has given assurance unto all men that he has raised him from the dead. So the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead is proof positive that there will be a judgment. It will be according to our works. And God's going to look at even the secret things that we think we have hidden. And he's going to judge everything that we've done. And it's all written down in his books. Then Paul says, it's going to be according to my gospel. In ver the end of verse 16. Paul's gospel. Now, his gospel was the same one that every, every other apostle preached in the New Testament. They all preached this uh, gospel. I mean, it, you, otherwise it'd be pretty brash of him to say, well, I'm the only one that gos has the gospel. I'm the only one to understand it. But you have to understand where he did get his gospel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12 says, Paul speaking, 
But I certify to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not after man. In other words, men did not teach me this gospel that I preached to you. This is, this is not coming from my being instructed by a man or by, by someone else teaching me this and then I teach it to you. For, verse 12 of Galatians chapter 1, I neither received it from men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus revealed his gospel to Paul directly. And he wrote half the New Testament, maybe more. And we have the gospel that he wrote, and that's the gospel that the Lord Jesus is going to use to judge us. This is the gospel that separates the saved from the unsaved. If you believe it, you live. If you don't believe it, you remain dead in your trespasses and sins. Now, the Jews were boasting in the Bible. This section of Scripture, verses 16 through 23, sets out to prove no matter what your benefits are that you have from God, you still have to have good works flowing out of your faith in Christ. Benefits without obedience is a disaster. You must have works which show and validate that your faith is real. This is all about works. Even if you have benefits, benefits from God, you still have to have works that uh, confirm your faith is real. Obedience is what is important, not benefits. Works when you have advantages and works if you don't have advantages. The Jews in the Gentile context is what Paul uses to explain this. But we're going to take a comparison and make it a little closer to home for us today. We don't generally have the Jew-Gentile context in, in our, our societies and in our cultures. So we're going to take the benefits that the Jews have and we're going to compare those to the benefits of being a Christian and having the Bible, and having the, the avail availability of going to a church and listening to preaching, and having all the different ways that the Word of God can interact with you uh, through the internet and through uh, recorded sermons and things. So we're going to spiritualize this to us, that, that the Jews, we're going to say those are the Christians. Verse 17 says, Behold, now we're going to spiritualize it, it says, Behold, you're called a Jew. Now, here's our spiritual application. Behold, you're called a Christian, and you rest in the Bible, and you make your boast of God. We have advantages as Christians. We have the Scripture. We, have, we can boast about those things that we have from God. But having advantages in and of themselves does not mean that we're walking close to God and that our works are pleasing to God. Benefits, like having the Bible and having a church and having freedom to express your religion, or freedom of religion, are not enough. You have to have works that back up that your faith is real. Benefits without obedience just en enhances your condemnation before God. Privilege abused deepens responsibility. Let's see what's wrong with resting in the law or the Bible and boasting about God. Our trust is in the Lord Jesus. We have nothing that we did not receive from Him. All our knowledge about God comes to us as a gift from Him. All the benefits of verse 17 through 20 are said by Paul here, kind of tongue-in-cheek. When you trust in benefits, and not in Christ, you're in trouble. Having the Bible but not living the Bible does you no good. Verse 18, remember we're going to put it and spiritualize it and put it for us Christians. Oh, it says, so you know the will of God? Well, it should result in you being holy. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, in the beginning of that verse, says, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. God's will for us is we be set apart to Him to be holy. Like they set the vessels in the temple apart for a particular use. They were set apart to God only to be used in the temple for God's service. They were made holy by that service. 
I mean, you couldn't borrow something from the temple and take it home and use it at home. Or you couldn't take it to your party or take it to a picnic. You know, they were set aside for that particular purpose. So our lives are to be set aside for the particular purpose of being set apart to be holy to God. The way we live should reflect the faith that we say that we have. Verse 18 says, you approve all things. That means you can distinguish things. You know right from wrong. When you have this ability and you don't live like that, you don't exercise your senses to discern good and evil. Like it talks about in Hebrews 5.14. It says there, But strong meat belongs to those who are full age. In other words, you want to eat the meat of the Bible, the, the things that are difficult. You want to grow up in your Christian experience to the point where you can feed upon His Word. And it feeds your soul. You're not just drinking the milk of the Word anymore. You've grown up. You've passed that stage of being weaned off of milk and now you're eating solid food and you're eating meat and you're growing thereby. Strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You have to use what you know from the Bible. This is another way of saying you have to live what you believe. It, it has to work its way out into your life. You have to go through the trials and the tribulations and the troubles that God brings your way and apply His Word to those things and keep on trusting Him and looking to Him and avoiding evil and doing good. Then verse 19 says, Because of your access to the Bible, you can guide the blind and light up the darkness. Is that what we really do? Christians should be the light of the world because of the way we live. Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. A city which is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Our lives should reflect the light of the Lord Jesus. People should be able to look to us and to see the gospel presented in our lives. But you're not living it it's just the blind leading the blind. Matthew 15, 14 says, Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, you know the end of that. Both of them are going to fall into the ditch. That's what it means when you understand what the Bible says and you won't do it and you're going to try to teach other people how to live. Self-confidence leads to feelings of superiority and being puffed up. Everybody falls in a ditch when a blind person leads them. Then verse 20, we know the Bible and we can teach those foolish people, those people that are void of understanding. They are babes. They are children with respect to knowledge. And we have all the answers, the truth from the Bible. Do you see what Paul is saying here? This boast is empty without actually living what you know. It is Godliness only in a form. 2 Timothy 3.5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. You're not supposed to associate with those kind of people. Those kind of people that are fake, they're fraud, they have a veneer, they're phony, they have a facade. They're not living what they say. They know. They don't, it, it doesn't show up in the way that they live. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at, all one word, biblestudyv by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study verse by verse.